okay subrat so uh, let's start uh, in, uh, recording your interview experience and i am going to record your interview experience uh, uh, today for two departments yes, uh, one is uh, for a phd in energy studies department iit guwahati and another is masters ms for material science in iit madras so before i go forward subrat uh, information from your side when did you graduate in mechanical engineering and uh, what is your grade score what is your cgp your category this information yes and uh, currently i am pursuing btech i am in my 8th semester and uh, my grade score is 386 okay. and i am from ac category and my cgp is 9.14 great 9.14 cgpa so that means ms or phd courses ke liye to bahut acha aapki wo eligibility hai you must have got many calls so suprat yes. other than that other than these two courses you got calls from other courses also so far yes sir i got sir call from uh, iit guwahati energy department ms prop it's okay. for ms okay. and uh, i have got for direct phd iit delhi applied mechanics iit okay. roorkee di- mechanical engineering direct phd iit madras aerospace ms and uh, this kind of this okay great so uh, subrat let's go oh, sir, for i forgot i also got a call for it kanpur uh, energy sustainable energy department ms ms also you got called yes. so everywhere there is a interview right yes subrat? yes sir. great okay so now uh, subrat let's uh, uh, share your interview experience let's uh, uh, record your interview experience for it madras ms in material science Yes, sir. So my first question is: Did they ask you for research proposal there? Yes, sir. While filling the form, basically not research proposal, but while filling the form, there are one thousand twenty-four characters uh, research statement needed to be done. So how much is thousand twenty-four character actually? So basically, I uh, eight or ten lines I have written. Sir. One paragraph, ah? Huh? One paragraph. in that only research uh, proposal is to be written yes yes, yes. okay like okay, i done. think i like i thought that whichever depa- whichever uh, basically the research i want to pursue there you so should i write just wrote it perfect okay. so so what did you write in that research proposal uh, did you write some research area in that yes sir basically i was interested in nanomaterials so okay. i told them i had written that i interested in nanomaterials i what are the few applications applications of nanomaterial okay. and there i found a professor who was working on nanomaterial and okay. specifically this carbon based nanomaterial okay so i written that what are the carbon based nanomaterials are there and what are their applications so these are few things i did so how it all started now please share your experience okay, so there are four uh, interviewers were there and uh, Uh, i think that uh, they are in they have given quite three hours time and uh, five people are there for only three hours so um, i was like uh, the third candidate i could be so i was first uh, t- went on to join the meeting so one professor was started so he asked me like um, what in which um, stream i am on so basically what are my engineering stream and my background and then they they didn't ask me by introduction only they just asked me like which stream i am on and what are the what is what are the, what is the area that i want to work on if i get a chance to admit in this department so i told nanomaterial and the professor i look for nanomaterial so he is also present in that interview so then he started to ask me the first question he asked me like what is nanomaterial to so he just told me to define that how nanomaterials are different from other materials so then after that i told them he asked me like what are the basic properties that a nanomaterial have like why we going to use that nanomaterial uh, bulk material are not enough then why we are using that nanomaterial so i mentioned few properties like uh, the super paramagnetism or super hydrophobicity uh, these are the properties i mentioned so then they asked me a question that uh, if if a nanomaterial is given to me and the and if he then asked me like what is the property by which i will able to know what is the crystal structure of that nanomaterial uh, that i need to tell so i was not very sure about that so but uh, i have studied in earlier in alloy chapter that if i want to know any crystal structure then i can do the xrd method like x ray diffraction method so just by guessing i told them that uh, we can use xrd method also in nanomaterial also so he told me yes that he in that xrd method is right but how, what is that method they just tell me to briefly explain that how we are going to use it so i knew xrd method but those are for those are typical xrd method which we are going to use for normal materials so i was not really knew that how in nanomaterial is that is the xrd method is little different or not 
So I told them that typical XRD method only. So then the professor said in this, this XRD method is little different in nanomaterial. And uh, so he was not really satisfied with that answer, that XRD method I had given. And then they asked me like that, then the, the properties that I mentioned the earlier that super hydrophobicity or super paramagnetism, then they asked about those properties that uh, why, what are those properties represent? And after that, they asked me like, uh, what are the carbon-based nanomaterials I know? So I told them that nanotubes I know about, then carbon nanotube is there, then quantum dot is there, graphene is there. So then they asked me like, there is a classification of nanomaterial like 1D nanomaterial, 0D, 2D. So they are asked me about that classification that uh, which category this carbon nanotube falls, which category this graphene falls, these questions. So by this way, this nanomaterial is ended. So after that, another, in, uh, another interview panelist started asking. So he basically started asking from stress strain, stress strain diagram, more precisely if I say. Then he started, first question was, what is the difference between true stress and engineering stress? Uh, so I told them that uh, basically this engineering stress, we measure it with respect to load by the in initial cross-sectional area. But in case of true stress, we use the instantaneous cross-sectional area. And then they, he asked me to draw the different curve for true stress strain and engineering stress strain. And they asked me why it is different. After that, they given me, he, after that, he basically asked me like, uh, how will I able to calculate? So if you give, give me a material, then how will I able to cal calculate the strength of that material uh, using this stress strain curve? So I said that by you in UTM, we are basically uh, able to draw this stress strain curve. And by this, we can know the yield strength of that material. And further using this yield strength, I can measure the shear strength also, which is basically half of that yield strength. And uh, by this way, I can also from stress strain diagram, I can know that what is the fracture strength or the ultimate tensile strength. These are the things. And then they had basically he told me, like told me, uh, he, the same professor then asked me some questions from mathematics that he have given me a two by two matrix in AX equals to B this form. And he asked me like, what are the condition? What will be the condition if he want me to give uh, this uh, unique solution? If unix or unique solution, what will be the condition? And uh, I told by B matrix must be equals to that matrix A and uh, it, is, it should be equals to number of variables. So I told them, then they given me the numbers also the matrix itself and uh, they given the data and they uh, told me like, now will I able to calculate the rank? But it was a very three by three matrix, but very easy matrix they had given. So by this way, it ends. So his second professor ended. And then the third professor came. So he told me like, uh, he was going to ask me about alloys and the strength of those alloys. So he started with asking like, what are the mechanism which we can use to, in order to strength, increase the strength of any material. So I told them that uh, we can use alloying, we can use grain refinement, work hardening or strain hardening is there. So one by one, he asked me like all the uh, processes by brief that what I mean about all these processes. So then he asked me like, what is the relation between the stress and strength and ductility? Like for ductile material, will the strength is more or for digital material or the strength will be more? And why they asked me that? Why I'm saying this? And after that, they told me to give an alloy of copper. So I told them brass can be an alloy of copper. So copper and zinc we can use in brass. So then he asked like, where if I alloy, if I add zinc in copper, then which position zinc will occupy? So I told them like, I was not sure about it. So I told them that zinc might occupy the interstitial sites. Uh, so he told me like why the interstitial sites only, why it will not occupy any other site. Uh, so that questions I am not able to give the answer perfectly. So then he told me like, uh, then he also told me like that I am little wrong in it that the zinc will not occupy the interstitial site or some other place. So he to ask, uh, basically told me to look for it after that interview ends. So by this way, this uh, third panel panelist also ends, and uh, the fourth panelist then basically asked me questions on dislocation. So he told me like, what do I mean about dislocation? And uh, what are the different types of dislocations can be possible? So I said that skew dislocation and uh, edge dislocation is there. So what is the difference between these two? And uh, he basically, he also um, 
asked me to draw if I can and different this crew dislocation and edge dislocation. If I by drawing, if I able to show them that what I mean about this, and these are the questions. So, uh, Subrata, you have given very detailed uh, description of your interview. Thanks a lot for that. Now, I want to ask you, uh, what was our learning after your intro experience? So basically, sir, after this material science interview that I learned that whatever I have studied so far in material science, I have not gone very deep. I just studied that what happens. I haven't focused on why it is happening. Why it happens. And so after that interview, understand that first of all, whenever I am basically studying what is happening, I look for the reason also, like why, why that is happening and why other things are not happening in that case. Okay. And I also understood that uh, whatever words I used while giving an answer, the next question will definitely going Coming to come from, from those words only. So I have to be very careful in choosing words. What I am basically saying. So, yes. So speak only that word which you know. Yes. Sir. Which you can explain. Mm. Yes, sir. And how important is your BTEC project, Subrat? Sir, in this material science interview, surprisingly, they didn't really ask me anything about BTEC project. Okay. They just started with their own questions. Mm. So this BTEC project they haven't asked. But yeah, any have any, any question, question from a research proposal? One zero two four character. That no, also didn't ask. Yeah, yeah, mm. So Subrat, uh, what are the new uh, other uh, interviews in pipeline for you now? Sir, I have an interview for Applied Mechanics, direct PhD in IIT Delhi. Okay. It was on 8th of 8th, so day after okay. tomorrow. Okay. And then I have an interview at 9th in uh, IIT Roorkee, direct PhD, Mechanical Engineering. Okay. And uh, I, I think in 15th or 16th, I don't have given not the date itself. So mm -hmm. there is an IIT Madras Aerospace Engineering MS. Great. Mm -hmm. Chalo, prepare well, Subrat, for all your these interviews. And let me thank you once again for sharing your intro experience and keep sharing your intro experiences with me. Sir, I have a question that uh, in COAP round two, I have got uh, IIT Indoor Metallurgy okay. for MTech. Mm -hmm. So I, I have keep it written and wait. Mm -hmm. And basically uh, what you suggest that do I have a chance of getting something good, better than this? In so what rounds? was the first round? What did you retain and wait in first round? So first round I got nothing. In the second round I got. Second round, I retain and wait, kiya na apne? Yes, sir. Yes. So, आपको अच्छा मिलेगा. Just keep moving and third round में discuss with me once again as you get new option. Yes. Sir. Call me and discuss with me. But retain and wait डाल दिया. अभी आगे चलते जाओ. Okay. Thank you. ठीक है सुब्रत. Thank you. Thank you. Sir.